Hiya, this is You Shine, I Shine, and I have the wonderful Richard Brecker with us, and he is the Joint Managing Director of Upfront TV and co-founder of Celebrities Worldwide. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate it. Now, I want to know, what is Celebrities Worldwide and Upfront TV? Because we are all obsessed with celebrities. Basically, Upfront TV is a booking agency. We secure talent for events, campaigns, and Celebrities Worldwide is a contacts database, so if people don't want to use a middleman, broker, or agency like us, mm -hmm. they can go online and get the contact information to contact the celebrities direct. Oh, wow. They're doing so much, you know. Yeah. Like, it's basically a 24-hour job sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure the agent would call them in the night if they had the opportunity. <laughs> they do. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, Particularly Tiger Woods' age. Oh yeah, oh my God, I can imagine. So where did this idea, did, you know, we, we've always loved having icons and celebrities and famous people, but you know, where did this want to come and to start a company all about them come from? Well, I started in print journalism. I wanted to be a sports reporter originally, oh, okay. and I did a little bit of that, and then did, had this dizzy idea of wanting to be rich and famous and as uh, we all do yeah, yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. and thinking that a career on screen might be the way to go mm -hmm. and uh, I had a brief dalliance uh, co-hosting a late night tv oh, show really? that the standard <laughs> described as one of the eight great late night shows and other people probably oh, wow. billed as one of the worst tv shows <laughs> ever made uh, it was ahead of its time because it was sort of a mm. uh, an Ali G uh, Mickey take if you like, but people didn't quite understand right. the. Some people got it, mm -hmm. but it was it was ahead of its time. It is. Um, and then after working in print journalism, I progressed to become a researcher, stroke mm -hmm. presenter for different shows. Um, and I was a researcher for Jonathan Ross many years oh, ago wow. on a show okay. called Tonight with Jonathan Ross, which yeah. was tremendous training, great fun. Um, and then from there, I went and worked in different independent. Uh, TV production companies mm -hmm. but the thing about TV and this still exists today is that it's largely staffed by freelancers on short-term contracts yes, it is. Mm. so there's tremendous insecurity about yeah. whether you're going to have your contracts renewed there's very few people who've got rolling contracts exactly. I mean if you're Simon Cowell or you know oh yes if you're Simon Cowell yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, then obviously you know you don't have to worry about these mm -hmm. things but for your you know run-of-the-mill researcher producer even directors, th th there's always an element of wondering when the next job's going to come. Okay. So in the last major recession, which was around 91, yeah. uh, I teamed up with an ex-colleague, well, she, 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 she was working with me on a chat show mm -hmm. called uh, Jameson Tonight. It was the first talk show that Sky TV oh, put yes, out. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and I teamed up with uh, my colleague who was working on that show, Claire Nye, mm -hmm. and we formed Upfront TV, essentially in the early days, to make TV programs, mm -hmm. because we thought we don't want to be at the, you know, beholden to, to TV uh, broadcasters for our next job. We wanted to try and create and shape our own destiny. Of course. So a lot of people said we were completely crazy starting a production company at that time in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. But we managed to get uh, underway the first independent uh, commission, uh, the first independent factual program, I should say, for mm -hmm. Sky One, a documentary on the shooting of Stephen Waldoff, who was a film editor, oh, wow. who was gunned in, uh, gunned in Earl's Court by mistake by the police. He survived, oh, but it was okay. an amazing story, and that yeah. went out on Sky One. And we did a program about single people called uh, Bachelors Confirmed that oh, ran okay. <laughs> that, that, that ran late night on ITV. Mm. And then we had the 13 part talk show, which I co-hosted with Linda Visardi called It's oh, really? Bizarre, which was the the, the much uh, lamented late night talk show. Mm. Um, and then after that, uh, we were we, we were courted by Granada TV because I had a reputation as being a good guest booker, I guess, from having worked with Jonathan and working with Derek Jameson on his Sky show. Yeah. And Claire, my business partner, uh, was also a great booker. I mean, in the days when Sky probably had a handful of viewers, yeah. she got Jodie Foster, who was an amazing booking. Hollywood, and, top Hollywood. And, and another yeah. Hollywood legend, mm. Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Oh, wow. And, you know, I, I remember, I think we, we had people like Frank Bruno, who was yeah. very hot at that time. Very the, hot. Mm -mm. You know, people mm. may, may, may laugh about it now, but, you know, <laughs> Frank was, 
He was the hotness. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at that, that, that time when he was sort of being talked about yeah, exactly. with, with Tyson, it, you know, that was a top uh, was, booking. Yes, exactly. And to, 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 to get Frank to appear on the show, I, I had to almost stalk him. <laughs> because, uh, you know, he was doing probably GMTV and, mm-hmm. and so, so many shows, the, the, the likes of Wogan yeah. at that time, they all wanted him. So for him to do a Sky show at that time, it, it was hard work to get him. And I think I actually got someone at Downing Street to pass a message to oh, him wow. when he was, um, you know, attending some function there. So when he came on the show, he said, that Richard, he's stalking me. <laughs> Uh, and you've got that on tape now. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, Sky wiped a whole lot of the tapes. Oh, okay. I mean, this is uh, crazy. So, um, yeah, we, we, we got a reputation as being good guest bookers, and Granada mm-hmm. came to us and they said, we're not so interested in you making programmes for us, but what celebrities can you get us tomorrow? Exactly. Who's, like, the hottest property in UK and the US at the moment? I mean, it's all news reactive and news related, mm. and we do get a lot of inquiries for Peter Andre at the moment, just because he's so popular. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, inquiries for for all the usual suspects, be they you know Brad Pitt or Angelina or mm. Tom Cruise. Um, Simon Cowell, I think, is um, still probably one of our most requested names on yeah. celebrities worldwide. You can contact any celebrity that. I wanted. So if I said, hook me up with Denzel Washington, how does that process happen? Uh, and mm. it, I want you to hook me up with Denzel Washington. <laughs> he was asking me about you the other you day. Know, I knew this. I know. So we we'll talk said, afterwards. Sh- he said, you shine. Oh. <laughs> I shine, you know. <laughs> so so how, how does it work? How, you know, we all shine to together. You, that we do all shine um, together. Listen, I mean, if you've got an event that is really desirable, Mm-mm. if it's a prestigious magazine mm. or if it's an award ceremony that he really feels he wants to attend, he will. Definitely. And similarly, you know, if it's a really good fee-paying assignment... So it's, um, it's about the money as well. Yeah. If it appeals to him, mm. he, he might consider it, but... You know, some people, it's not all always about the money. No. They, they might do it for the kudos and prestige. Mm. We worked with Mini-Me a couple of times, uh, Vern J. Troyer, Mm-mm. and he's a lovely man. He, he looks and I like think even man. if he wasn't small, he'd be big, yeah. if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love if that. If he was a regular-sized guy, um, he would be a star because he just oozes charisma. Mm. And we brought him in to do the launch of uh, Sega Dreamcast many years ago. Yeah, man. And he really wanted a party. Um, but, you know, our client had paid money to bring him in Mm-mm. and to, to do the gig. And we had to make sure that the pictures from the launch mm. were the pictures that the newspapers and magazines used. Yes. He wanted to go to Stringfellows. Oh, no. <laughs> and I had to keep him on a bit of a leash yeah. because I said, look, Vern, if you get pictured in between, nestling in between the bosom of two... <laughs> Love, lovely string fellow ladies. Um, if I'm a picture editor, that's the picture that's going to run that week. It will run. They're not going to be interested in a picture of you playing at a games console or, you know, yeah. doing a, a bog standard publicity shot. Exactly. So we had to sort of, you know, rein him in. Um, but he's a lovely guy, he really is. What happens in the world of celebrities? Do you get to know the people? Do you, you know, have any real correspondence? Is it a totally different world to the world that ordinary people like you and I live? Or, or should I say, I? <laughs> you know, so what kind of world is that? You know? I mean, yesterday it was reported Peter Andre, who we had the pleasure of booking some weeks ago, and he's yeah. a really nice guy, actually. I can imagine. He, he, he broke down in tears on an interview being quizzed about his personal life. We're all human at the end of the day. Of course. And yes, we have forged friendships with some celebrities. But interestingly, in the time we've been doing this job, probably, I don't know, 15 or more years, very few of them Mm -hmm. actually stop and say thank you. Even though we are getting value out of them turning up and, you know, we're earning money from their attendance sometimes. um, But at the same time, it doesn't cost anything to say Thank you. Always. And there are a few really nice people in the business. Jenny Faulkner from GMTV is she, a lovely girl. She always sends an email and says, thank you for inviting me or had a great time. Sarah Kaywood. Yep. Uh, and Barbara Windsor as well, you know. Love nice, Babs. Nice people. Mm-mm. But by and large, a lot of the, the, the younger ones coming through, a lot of the reality uh, generation, mm. I don't think 
they've been properly brought up. I don't think. <laughs> no, I mean they no, they, no. they haven't been taught Mm-mm. to say please and thank you. No. And I find that quite sad. And you know, if there are lessons to be learned, I think um, the people who've stuck around for a long time, mm-hmm. you know, people like Elton and Rod Stewart, mm-hmm. even the Rolling Stones. That's not, you know, just talent alone. That's that's ensure that they stay there they, they know how to play the game and they're professional they turn up on time exactly well most of the time most of the time <laughs> they, 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 they turn up on time and they understand how it works and they make sure that um, you know that, that, that they appreciate what people do for them as well wonderful I, th- I really do believe that you have to have gratitude in everything you do and maybe with the reality stars it's a case of because they haven't grafted you know, I don't. You know, it's just an opinion that they haven't grafted for it. It, it and it's come quite easily because anyone can be a star. It feels like these no, days. No, I think or, you know, with X Factor and mm. all these shows, uh, they've got fantastic exposure yeah. to you know ten, twenty million people that a lot of other performers would not have had. Exactly. And so they're propelled and thrust into the the spotlight and expected to know how to perform mm. off camera. And it, it's not it's not it's easy, okay. you know. Mm. We all have off days where, you know, we get out of bed the wrong side and just don't <laughs> feel like, you know, yeah. like like going there. It's 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 not always easy. What inspires me to do what I do? That's a good question. I guess it beats working for a living. Um, no, the grey hair is testament to how hard it can be. You, you know, it's I guess it's about following a hobby to some extent because it's something that interests me and occasionally you you get to meet people who really inspire you and who you've always admired and um, it can be rewarding it is very stressful but occasionally you come away we did a did an event with Shaggy um, for a fundraiser and I'd never met him before I wasn't that familiar with him Mr. Bombastic (laughs) Mr. Bombastic Um, (laughs) and you know he just made the evening such a success he he wasn't even feeling great that day but he gave it 110% so thank you so much Richard it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here make sure you work hard if you want to get into the world of celebrity be a celebrity oh even harder have the tenacity have the heart and uh, make sure you read your papers and know all about popular culture. And remember, you shine, I shine. Or is it the other way around? No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs>